Okay, so um, to finish up here, I wanted to just show you some examples of reading in data. Obviously, you're not going to want to build data from scratch all the time. You want to read in uh, read in data. What I'm specifically going to show you is reading in data from a table, um, a CSV file. Um, but there are like add-ons and packages that allow you to read in data from other types of formats, like images, geospatial data. Um, you know, multi-dimensional arrays, things like that. Okay, so um, let me just show you a few examples. So in R, you can set a directory. So whenever you set a directory with the set wd method, that'll that'll make it such that you don't have to put the entire file path in every time you want to call something. It's just going to assume that it's from this directory. Now, if you want to try to grab something from not this directory then you can still put in the full file path. So that's what set directory does. Um, it tells you the directory. So let me just do that real quick. Note that it will yell at you if you don't have that file path on your computer. So like if I did like, uh, let's put an X on the end. There's no file, there's no folder there. It'll tell me cannot change working directory because that's not an existing directory. Okay, so set working directory. If you want to get the working directory back, you can do get working directory and that spits it back. One thing you should note on Windows computers, which um, is uh, which is also true for like if you're working in Python, is you gotta change the the, the dash, right? So um, it, R is gonna use your uh, forward slash as opposed to your backslash. So it'll do a file path. You either need to convert them into a forward slash or you can double up your backslashes with like because that's an escape character. Either way, um, but it won't accept if we did something like. So let me just uh, put in backslashes. So if we try to run this, it'll say um, that is unrecognized escape character. So it's telling you that that's not working. So you could either swap them around or double them up. So here I'm just doubling them up and that gives us back that worked or we could again swap them into forward slashes okay note that it's not necessary to set a working directory you can always just put in the full file path if you want um, but it can be useful especially if you're reading or writing data to the same directory all the time I guess a, that's a good side note too um, if you do write data out of R like write out a CSV file for example if you don't put a file path in it's going to go to the that file will get saved to the to the working directory okay so here I'm pulling in a data layer um, uh, from my working directory um, this is a list of movies basically um, and then um, this is a CSV file and I'm telling it that the separator is a comma and there is a header, so the first row should be treated like the column la the column labels as opposed to actual data. And then the strings as factors equals true. What that means is that any column that is a character column is going to read it in and treat it like a factor with defined factor levels. Okay, so we read that in. It should work. So now we have this data object. So now if we look over here, we have all these values which are like vectors and whatnot. And now we also have this data subcategory and that's where you have like your data frames and like your lists and stuff. So this is our new object. Just real quick as a side note, if you wanna get rid of stuff over here, you can use this broom button and remove it. So now it's empty and I'd have to rerun this to get back my movies data frame. Okay, um, just a couple of functions that are useful for working with data frames. Um, this is showing you tail and uh, tail and structure. So if tail will just print the last, I think the default is five or ten records from the table. There's also the head function. The structure just gives you some kind of info about each column. So okay, so here is what I got back from um, from tail. It basically prints back just the last few records, and then for the um, structure here. Uh, sorry, that was this. Those are the last, uh, I guess, oh, I guess it did six. Yeah, oh, no, I guess it yeah, did six. And then um, this is the info about each column. So it tells you things like the data type. If the, Here's saying this genre is a factor level with 18 levels. So there's 18 different genres that are differentiated, so on and so forth. 
Um, okay, so another useful tool is names. If you run, or a function, so if you run names on a data frame, what it's going to do is spit back the names of the columns. So let me, uh, again, I'll clear the console here. So if I do names of movies, it's going to return back all of the, the column names. Now if I wanted to rename the columns, then I could do names movies, and then I can set that equal to a list of new names. So I could do like C1, these are not obviously not great column names, but I'm just trying to show you. Actually, I guess there's six. Let me just copy this a couple times. And comma, comma, so C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6. Now if I run this, now it should have set those equal to that. So if I go over here and click on this drop down, you can see that they've all been renamed. Um, also if I just ran this again, names, movies, you'll see that you have a new set of names. So anyway, this names function is good for getting column names and then reassigning column names. Um, you can also just change like one column name. So here, I'm just taking the fourth column and I'm changing it from whatever it currently is, which is one, two, three, four, I guess rating, I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, and I'm changing it to category. Um, so that's what the name function is for. Um, again, getting the names, changing all the names, just changing a specific name using an index. Um, this is this section just goes through some notes on other ways to read stuff in. So there are different packages and tools to read in different types of data. So for example, the XLSX package lets you read in Excel spreadsheets. Um, the um, uh, this data.table and reader R packages are really useful, especially if you have really large data sets. They tend to read things in real efficiently. Um, the foreign package is really useful for reading in um, a database file, um, so DBF files. Um, yeah, and then the rest of this is just a couple quick side notes. Uh, one thing people do a lot in R is attach and detach. And this is used so you don't have to, if you're working with the same data frame, you don't have to keep calling the data frame name all the time. So you basically can attach the data and then use it. And then when you're done using it, or and you, you can detach it. So for example, I'm just going to do this at the cursor. I could do attach movies. Now if I was going to like try to use this then I don't have to write movies all the time so is this an example of that oh yeah let's just use the example so here I'm attaching let me detach this okay so um, let me just run this so note here that now if I do an attach of an object then whenever I use it, I don't have to specify the data frame. So normally I would have to put in here like movies, dollar sign, and then this, but I don't have to in this case because the data frame is attached. So it's just assuming this column is coming from that data frame. Um, if you do use attach, you should always detach when you're done. Um, but to be honest, I recommend not doing this. Um, it, a lot of people still do, it was traditionally used a lot in R, but um, a lot of people don't do this anymore, and um, I think it can be it can get you into trouble. Um, it can be a little confusing. So in short, I recommend not using attach and detach. Um, but it, it it is something people do if you're interested. Um, and then just to end, here's a few you may want to just read through these. These are some really common functions that you'll see used in R all the time. So for example, in call will return the number of columns in a data frame or a matrix in row returns a number of rows in a data frame or a matrix. Um, length is used to get the number of like values or feature or objects or whatever inside of a vector or a column of a data frame. R bind uh, uh, merges rows together, C bind merges columns together. Uh, merge can be used to merge multiple data frames together. Um, Get working directory will split will uh, split um, will, will return the the working directory path. Table is used to create a contingency table from two vectors. 
um, sequence creates a sequence from a number to another number by a certain step. Rep is for replicating, repeating a value. R norm creates random values with a certain mean and standard deviation relative to a normal distribution. And sample is used to like randomly sample either with or without replacement. Um, and then comments, real quick, are um, in R, comments are the same as they are in Python. Expand this a bit. So anything that's prefixed with a hashtag or a pound sign is a comment. So that'll be ignored by the interpreter and it, it'll just, it's there for the user. So again, it's a good idea for you to comment your code if you're gonna use it later or other people might use your code. Um, so comments are with a hash or pound sign there in, in R. And then lastly, if you just wanna quit an R session using code, you can do that by just typing in Q and then an empty argument there, or empty, oh, oh it's just yelling at me because I, uh, it, there's changes that need to be saved. <laughs> um, so once that's saved, and then if you hit yes, that'll kill your R session and save your changes and whatnot.